Hi everybody and welcome to From the Shelf, the program where I read you a classic story one chapter at a time. This season's new story is, if you were listening at the end of last season, The Boxcar Children by Gertrude Chandler Warner. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say last season, last season we read The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And the season before that, we read The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. So check our Facebook and or YouTube channel to get the past episodes if you feel like listening to this. So the way that it will work is I'm going to read to you one chapter of the book every weekday. So five days a week. And you don't need to pay attention to the screen or even have the screen on. You can play it and listen to me essentially like an audiobook but you don't need to be looking there's not going to be pictures or images or anything like that so without further ado let's get started with chapter one of the boxcar children this chapter is called the four hungry children one warm night four children stood in front of a bakery no one knew them no one knew where they had come from. The baker's wife saw them first as they stood looking in at the window of her store. The little boy was looking at the cakes, the big boy was looking at the loaves of bread, and the two girls were looking at the cookies. Now, the baker's wife did not like children. She did not like boys at all. So she came to the front of the bakery and listened, looking very cross. The cake is good, Jesse, the little boy said. He was about five years old. Yes, Benny, said the big girl, but bread is better for you, isn't it, Henry? Oh, yes, said Henry. We must have some bread, and cake is not good for Benny and Violet. I like bread best anyway, said Violet. She was about ten years old, and she had pretty brown hair and brown eyes. That is just like you, Violet, said Henry, smiling at her. Let's go into the bakery. Maybe they will let us stay here for the night. The baker's wife looked at them as they came in. I want three loaves of bread, please, said Jessie. She smiled politely at the woman, but the woman did not smile. She looked at Henry as he put his hand in his pocket for the money. She looked cross, but she sold him the bread. Jessie was looking around, too, and she saw a long red bench under each window of the bakery. The benches had flat red pillows on them. "'Will you let us stay here for the night?' Jessie asked. "'We could sleep on those benches, and tomorrow we would help you wash the dishes and do things for you.' Now the woman liked this. She did not like to wash dishes very well. She would like to have a big boy to help her with her work. "'Where are your father and mother?' she asked. "'They are dead,' said Henry. "'We have a grandfather in Greenfield, but we don't like him,' said Benny. Jessie put her hand over the little boy's mouth before he could say more. "'Oh, Benny, keep still,' she said. "'Why don't you like your grandfather?' asked the woman. "'He is our father's father, and he didn't like our mother,' said Henry. "'So we don't think he would like us. "'We are afraid he would be mean to us.' "'Did you ever see him?' asked the woman. "'No,' answered Henry. "'Then why do you think he would be mean to you?' asked the woman. "'Well, he never came to see us,' said Henry. "'He doesn't like us at all.' "'Where did you live before you came here?' asked the woman. But not one of the four children would tell her. We'll get along all right, said Jessie. We want to stay here for only one night. You may stay here tonight, said the woman at last, and tomorrow we'll see what we can do. Henry thanked her politely. We are all pretty tired and hungry, he said. The children sat down on the floor. Henry cut one of the loaves of bread into four pieces with his knife, and the children began to eat. Delicious, said Henry. Well, I never, said the woman. She went into the next room and shut the door. I'm glad she is gone, remarked Benny. She doesn't like us. Shh, Benny, said Jessie. She is good to let us sleep here. After supper, the children lay down on their red benches and Violet and Benny soon went to sleep. 
But Jesse and Henry could hear the woman talking to the baker. She said, I'll keep the three older children. They can help me. But the little boy must go to the children's home. He is too little. I cannot take care of him. The baker answered, Very well. Tomorrow I'll take the little boy to the children's home. We'll keep the others for a while, but we must make them tell us who their grandfather is. Jesse and Henry waited until the baker and his wife had gone to bed. Then they sat up in the dark. Oh, Henry, whispered Jesse, let's run away from here. Yes, indeed, said Henry. We'll never let Benny go to a children's home. Never, never. We must be far away by morning or they will find us, but we must not leave any of our things here. Jesse sat still thinking. Our clothes and a cake of soap and towels are in the big laundry bag. Violet has her little work bag, and we have two loaves of bread left. Have you your knife and the money? Yes, said Henry. I have almost four dollars. You must carry Benny, said Jesse. He will cry if we wake him up, but I'll wake Violet. Shh, Violet, come. We are going to run away again. If we don't run away, the baker will take Benny to a children's home in the morning. The little girl woke up at once. She sat up and rolled off the bench. She did not make any noise. What shall I do? She whispered softly. Carry this, said Jessie, and she gave her the work bag. Jessie put the two loaves of bread into the laundry bag, and then she looked around the room. All right, she said to Henry, take Benny now. Henry took Benny in his arms and carried him to the door of the bakery. Jessie took the laundry bag and opened the door very softly. All the children went out quietly. They did not say a word. Jessie shut the door and then they all listened. Everything was very quiet. So the four children went down the street. Okay, that is all that we have for chapter one. But don't forget to join me next time on From the Shelf for the next chapter, chapter two. Goodbye.